Welcome to Toffee TV, it is the match reaction. Everton won Sheffield United nil at Goodison Park today. Everton finished the season with five straight victories at Goodison Park eh, without conceding a goal. Impressive form indeed for Sean Dyche's men at the end. And that was the thing that was going to keep Everton safe, the home form. That's what they've done. They've got themselves 15 points in the last five games at Goodison to move them away from any kind of danger. Uh, and I've just seen a stat there and obviously not difficult to work out. But even with the 17 points the Premier League wanted to give Everton, Everton would have been fine. So there you go. We've, we've moved, what is it, 14 points clear of um, Luton Town in that third relegation place. And obviously we, we secured our Premier League status a couple of weeks ago. And, but it was good to finish the season with the victory. Uh, Jack Harrison missed out uh, with an injury. Sean Dyche has since said that he doesn't expect them to be available for Arsenal next week, so that'll probably be Jack Harrison's last appearance for Everton. We probably won't see him in an Everton shirt again, uh, unless leads don't come up and Everton get him on loan again for next season. I, I, I have no clue what happened with that there. So that meant that James Garner played on the right-hand side of midfield. Seamus Coleman was, was in a right-back and he looked at... If we didn't kind of know he's going to stay or expect them to stay, I'd be thinking, was that a sentimental decision by Sean Dyche rather than play Ben Goffrey there? It was done well, of course. But I'm not convinced Sean Dyche does sentiment like that. Yeah, it's an opportunity for Seamus to play and he done all right. He done okay on a very, very hot day at Goodison Park today. And Everton came out and were quickly in control of the game, really. And there wasn't loads of chances. There wasn't loads of chances. I think we have to say that, don't we? I think, you know, we, we huffed and puffed a little bit. Abdelai Decore had a headed opportunity early on, but he was offside, could have knocked it down to Don. But we did get in round the back with some tremendous centre forward play from Dominic Calderloon. I think it was James Tarkovsky or Seamus Coleman who drilled the ball forward. Dom had a great first touch, took it down, went beyond the defender, cut it back to Decore, who was on his own with the goalkeeper, and at the line of Decore, hit it straight to Fodderingham, and it was a, a good opportunity to put us one up, and it needed, it should have been a better finish, really, from Decore, middle of the goal. He flashed the header wide as well in that. Dom had had a, a little run from the side and a shot which Fodderingham caught easily, really as Everton looked for that opening goal, but there was a little bit of huff and puff about it. It was, it it's, without intensity, you can see that this Everton side isn't overflowing with creativity. Dwight McNeil played a little bit too central for me today. He was moving inside and therefore he just wasn't really in the game as much as we needed him to be. And Ashley Young was obviously uh, at left back, was trying to get up and support as much as he could, but, with it, with an eye on not leaving the back door open and, and leaving space for them. So we didn't really have a left-hand side today because McNeil did go inside. But we did score a very, very good goal and McNeil uh, got on the ball and played a lovely little through ball. Dom made a brilliant run. Goalkeeper came out, went round the keeper and from an acute angle looked up, dinked the ball across and had the lie to Corey. Couldn't miss, headed it over the line. His first goal since December and it gave Everton the lead. And, and that was the opportunity to go on and really put the game to bed. But we just we just couldn't find a killer pass or you know when we got to the edge of the penalty area, we were too slow at trying to get a shot away and we made the wrong decision three or four times in good areas. Uh, otherwise we could have possibly added to that to the, the you know the goal. Uh, Sheffield United didn't really didn't really cause us any problems. You know, they they down obviously and played with a little bit of a freedom. But the only real one I can think of is Gustavo Hammer hit one wide in the first half. Uh, Cameron Artie uh, of November and Diaz I think it was had a shot as well which went comfortably wide. And um yeah, you know, we went in 1-0 at half-time. Came out second half, Everton stepped it up. Thought the first 10 minutes of the second half, we played some really nice football. Some nice little triangles. 
Again, they'll make the wrong decision a couple of times. Dominic Calvert Lewin's made a good run, and we haven't fed him. James Garner in particular, Dom, a lovely little bend and run. If Garner just thre threads him in, he's in with the goalkeeper, and Garner tried to bend it in with his left foot, and it's a cross in. It went miles wide. And there was a few of those moments we had balls that came across the box that we couldn't turn in. And then Sheffield United, fair play to them, they kind of grew into it a little bit and put us under a little bit of pressure without really creating anything where you thought they were going to score. Because they done similar in the final third. They overhit a cross or overhit a pass. Or Everton did get a good, you know, we did get a couple of good blocks in there. And, but they were lively for a period. And our energy did drop it. Listen, like I said before, a game that you, that is no intensity in it because you're safe. You know, what can Everton, what could Everton really achieve? Staying ahead of Brentford. That was it. Um, you want to win, of course you do. And you want that clean sheet. But when the intensity and the desire or the need, to win the game has dropped and Sheffield United are relegated with nothing to play for on a hot day. It, you know, it is easy to, to fall into to the pattern that Everton did and, and I, you know, there was a real poor half an hour in that second half, I would say, where, or certainly 25 minutes, where we were we were flagging a little bit and they've made changes. They freshened their team up a bit. Chris Wilder, I think he made four changes before Sean Dyche made any for us. Uh, but he did make the changes he brought off Abdelaide Corey um, and he brought off Dwight McNeil and he put on Andre Gomez and Lewis Dobbin. Um, Gomez's last appearance at Goodison Park it looked like. Uh, Dobbin was on to offer that little bit of little bit of pace. Neither really got into the game. Gomez showed some nice touches at times and tried a couple of little through balls didn't quite come off. Um, and then the manager made the change and, and brought on Yusuf Chimiti for Dominic calvert -Lewin, who I thought was superb today. calvert -Lewin, his hold-up play, good centre-forward play. People didn't give him the kind of service he needed, but I thought he was Evans' best player today. And Chimiti come on and was lively and went on a good little run and faced a shot just over the bar. And Everton really should have gone through the up. I went, great work from Chimiti over on the left-hand side and cut the ball back to James Garner. And I think if Garner just takes a touch, gets it onto his right foot, he'll just finish it. You know, he, he, there was no one near him and he's hit it with his left foot, snatched at it and put it over the crossbar. Uh, and that was kind of it, really. Chimity had a chance late, very late on, which Fotheringham saved. Could have done better. Um, and Sheffield United, like I say, huffed and puffed, but didn't really ever look like they were going to get a goal. And uh, we won the games. And uh, Andre Gomez went off injured. There was a debut, Premier League debut for Lewis Warrington, Boyard Evertonian, uh, Gladys Street End, season ticket holder for a number of years. He would come on the pitch for his Premier League debut. You know what? Showed a couple of nice touches. Got a good tackle in as well to win us the ball back. Uh, so he had that as well at the end of the game. And, and we won it. And that really... Is all that matters, isn't it? We've we finished the season on a high. We finished the season with good home form, and we need to take that into next season for sure. Um, the manager had his tracky on, therefore the home win, therefore the clean sheet. And it is mad Everton still not that it matters, but Everton still haven't won a home game when the opposition have scored since that Crystal Palace game when Frank Lampard was the manager. So two seasons without a. Uh, when the opposition have scored, we haven't won the home game, so bit of a mad stat there. Not that it matters. Don't know. I don't know how to take that. Is it really good defensive numbers, or is it when the opposition score? We we don't know. We haven't got enough firepower. Who knows? But that's for the summer. That's for the you know the recruitment team and Sean Dice to juggle some finances and and obviously some players will go out and we'll see whether we can replace them. Uh, the big thing is obviously the takeover stuff and all that. That needs sorting next, but this is the football side of it. My man of the match today was Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I thought Ashley Young had a good game or a decent game. Um, I thought Jared Brantwaite and Tarkovsky were decent. It's just a guy in midfield, but Dom, for me, was, uh, was head and shoulders above everybody else, in my opinion, on the pitch today. And he gets my man of the match. Created the goal as well, of course. So there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. 
Everton have won again. It's a lovely feeling. One game to go now. It is at the uh, Emirates. It'll be a tough game. Arsenal going for the title. And the way results results play out, it could be a massive game. I mean, if Arsenal were to win at Manchester United tomorrow and then Spurs were to either beat Manchester City or take a point off Manchester City, then then if it was a point, then both Arsenal and Tottenham would be on... Uh, Arsenal and Tottenham. Arsenal and uh, Manchester City would be on 86 points going into the final game with a three-goal advantage to Arsenal. So it'll be, <laughs> that'd be very interesting last day. Uh, there you go. Thank you for watching. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Enjoy your night. See you later.